again. Cedar Cross. Isn't it a great day to be here? All right. It's a beautiful day outside. It was a beautiful day yesterday. You know, it's been a great day, a great few days. And so we want to, we, we got lots of announcements to get to. So I'm going to try to get into it really quick because there's a lot of things happening. A, you know, in a great church, a lot of things happen. And so that's what we're doing. And so if you're a guest today, we would love for you to fill out our the form that's right there in the front in the pocket. If you, if you, we'd love you just just gonna, so we can love on you, not because we want to harass you or do anything else. We just want to make sure that we know who you are and and, and anything we can, and anything we can do for you. Also on that card, there's also places to make other decisions, prayer requests, other things like that. So if you have that in your in your member and you want to put something down, just make sure it gets either in the offering plate or or, or to the pastor or one of the or one of the elders. So last week's offering was $3,224.65. That's that's nice. Big shout out to all those folks who are are tithing online. You know, you can always give online. Visit Cedar Cross Country Church at our website and go scroll down to giving and and select and it'll walk you right through it. So if you can't be here, you can still tithe. Last week's attendance was 75. Online views were 46. So we still got lots of folks looking online. Uh, we'd like to recognize our CCC member of the week. So who is it this week? Uh-huh. This week it is Lynn Mickelson. <laughs> you didn't know, did you? <laughs> Leanne's our youth director, in case you didn't know. Uh, she serves, young, serves our young adults, and she takes our youth to camp every year. You know That, that in itself is something. Just going, just going to camp. <laughs> That's Leanne. Right. Thank you, Leanne, for mentoring and leading our young adults. Thank you so much. Uh, today is our youth outing and movie. So just now you know who Leanne is. <laughs> if you if you want to go to the movie, you're youth and you want to go to the movies with them, you you just see her and she'll help get you there. Today is a business meeting. That's where some of our folks are. They're back there in the kitchen getting things ready because we're going to have a lunch afterward after the business meeting. So that, you know, you know what that means? That means the business meeting needs to be short. (laughs) 
that's 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 why you know that's why we feed you afterwards, you know. Yeah, I, <laughs> we got a lot of information to share with you during the business meeting, and it's about the business of the church, and we want to. And there's some things we need to vote on as a church, and so we want to make sure that that's all taken care of. Uh, ladies, re uh, refit exercise Monday, Thursday at at uh, 6 p.m. Women's Bible study every Wednesday at six at 6 p.m. is dinners provided for those folks that come. Yesterday was our senior citizens trivia night at Alvarado, and uh, hopefully some of y'all got to go to that. Uh, Tuesday uh, was April 23rd. Uh, Tuesday, April 23rd. Not to, yeah, Tuesday's going to be April 23rd. Uh, is that right? Next week. Not this week, but next week. I'll try four weeks. Yeah, we're, we're going to be gone next week. So that, that's why it got me confused. <laughs> so at CCC, we'll be serving the Student Baptist Ministry in Cleburne. So if you can help with that, see Karen, and, she, and she'll make sure that, that uh, you get connected with the folks. Saturday, April 27th is game night. Now, you have a, you have a special uh, a flyer in your – let me get, see if I can get it out. Yours is blue. Mine's yellow. See, it's all different colors. Well, one of the things we need to we need for you to, to do is we need you to volunteer to help. Oh, yeah, they need helpers. They need helpers to set up. They need helpers to tear down. They need helpers to, to monitor the games during the during that time. You know, so some of you, I, I heard they're going to play volleyball. So if, if you're not if you're not young enough to play volleyball anymore, or you got a hurt knee or a shoulder, you know, and you make keeps you from doing that. You could be, you could actually monitor that game, and because maybe you know something about it more than I do. Uh, so there's other there's other games going on, and so uh, they need they're going to need some help with that. And so we're hoping that you could that you need to sign up. There'll be a sign up sheet out here in the in the foyer, and they'll need they'll have a short meeting next Sunday to talk about. Uh, what you need to do and when you need to be there and that kind of stuff. So they'll give you all the information you need to know. Uh, May, fr Friday, May 17th, we're going to need help setting up for the garage sale. You already see if you've been back in the fellowship hall, and if you haven't been after, after the service, if you go back there and look after the business meeting, you're going to see we're already gathering a bunch of stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, that's the garage, then the garage sale is the next day. So we're going to have to set up for that, get everything priced and marked and, you know how it goes. You know how garage sales work. Also on the 18th is Helping Hands for Jesus, uh, third annual Hall for Hunger at 8 a.m. So if you if you can do a half K, you, you get a hold of Summer, and she will make sure you're signed up. You just get call Helping Hands for Jesus there in Alvarado, and they'll make they'll help you take care of that. Monday, May 27th, burgers for seniors in Alvarado Seniors Apartment. I understand Jerry's going to cook for that. If Jerry's cooking, it's got to be good. So even if you you, you got to go help, so might you might get a burger too, you know. <laughs> uh, June nineteenth, twenty twenty first, and twenty third is VBS. We're still there's still some volunteers needed. Uh, you're going to have a meeting what day? Twenty the twenty eighth, April twenty eighth. There will be a meeting. Shouldn't be too long. But there'll be a meeting about what's going to happen, and you might even learn a song, <laughs> you know, because there's there's some really neat music with this with this program, so that you might even learn a song. Normally, we have an outline for the sermon, but today we're going to pro we're providing you something different. It's the transcript, transcript of the sermon. You you got one on the way in. If you would like another one, or you like more. Uh, or if you'd like previous transcripts, like last week's about Revelations, if you'd like that transcript, let Nancy know in the church office, and she'll she'll get it to you, either email or, or printed, whichever way you need it. Okay, our pantry is feeding the hungry. One woman stopped by and told us, this is a godsend. It feeds my family. Rock went out there this morning, and there was only two cans left in the, in the pantry. And he filled it all up again, and uh, so it's feeding families. It's taking care of, take, helping take care of folks in the, in need here in our here in our area. <clears throat> you know what else? 
we have a donut ministry. You know what that is? You know what a donut ministry is? Donut ministry is is right out there on the by the coffee in the morning. It takes money. It takes about twenty five to thirty dollars a week to uh, provide donuts, and uh, some some gracious members have been doing that. But we'd like for more of you to have a part in that ministry. You know, there's there's it, we're, it's not like we're running short. We just like more of you to be able to to take part in that ministry, and uh, so. There's a bucket out there, a little bucket right by the coffee pot. If you want to donate in that, or if you want to put it in an envelope and put it in the in and designated donut ministry, yeah. then uh, you put it in the offering plate, and it'll go. It'll get to the right people, and we'll make sure the donuts get bought and they get and they're and they're brought here. We already have that taken care of. We've tried the sign up sheet before. But what happened was we get too many one week and not enough the next week, and so. We've decided it's easier if we have one person taking care of that and bringing it and bringing them and they just provide the money to do it. So if you would like to be a part of that, even just a little part, it doesn't, you don't have to buy the whole thing, just a little part of it. You, there's a way to donate. Okay. So that's a donut ministry. There's a lot of folks that like to come and get a cup of coffee and a donut on Sunday morning. So, so, uh, are you ready for worship? Yeah. I tell you what, I'm excited about worship today. It's going to be great. And there's some good music fixing to come up. A place and a time for us to get close to the Lord and, and prepare our hearts. So let's pray together to start out. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. The beautiful weather and the opportunity to come and worship you in a magnificent way. Or take us and guide us, and let our presentation be to you. It's for your name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you stand with me? So good to be in God's house today. It's good to see every one of you. We want to say hello to our friends online. I want you to worship with us.
never be the same. Forever I have changed. Oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way. weren't doing the if you weren't doing the hand signals you weren't singing okay i'm tempted to sing it over again let y'all teach us how much you got going it must be a popular song with the youth yay yay me <laughs> one of my philosophies of worship <clears throat> and i hope you can kind of sense it as i'm as i'm leading you is that um i definitely want to have generational worship. And I don't want to leave anyone out. I want everybody to be included. From the oldest to the youngest. I want the children to hear something that they recognize. I want the middle-aged folks that play, uh, the teenagers and the middle-aged folks that play, crank up the music in the, on the radio in the car. I want you to hear something that you've heard on the radio. But then I want the grandmothers and the folks that have come through decades of worship singing out of a little red or a little black or a little blue hymn book. I want you to hear something that you recognize. And then, then those folks that have come newly come to the Lord and they're brand new. I want you to get some kind of a real foundation for where worship has come. You know, whenever I was 18 years old is, uh, the first time I ever stepped into ministry and I remember we were all singing out of hymn books okay and I remember when we first projected words on the screen I remember this little old guy he came up to me with his arms crossed like this and he was hump he was mad he said I'm not singing those off the wall songs and I felt I was like well but we got to pro make progress. We got to we got to learn new stuff. But I understand it now that I'm older. There's so many new songs I'll never be able to keep up with all the songs that are coming out. But I want you to be able to lean into the presence of God. I want you to be able to hear something that makes you want to your heart want to rejoice. And there's nothing more precious than thinking about heaven. And I loved it when the pastor told me he was going to be preaching about heaven today. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing? 
Hallelujah. Will I be able to sing it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine.
glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved by his grace, and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, oh, what a day! Glorious day that will be. Amen. Amen. I'm just so glad to see all of you. I just love you with all my heart. And I just, I, I again, also want to thank those that are worshiping with us uh, live on YouTube and uh, watching our services on YouTube. Welcome. We appreciate you viewing in and on the service and worshiping with us. Uh, as we approach our time of worshiping the Lord through our giving, let us look at this scripture verse and let's all read it out loud together. In Malachi 3.10. It says, let's all read it out loud. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. All right, as we come to our time of prayer, um, I want to extend this, this prayer time. Um, Gloria uh, was telling me about her great grandbabies back in the hospital again, just a little, little child and having kidney problems. And so I want us to have a special prayer. Uh, Richard and Gloria, would y'all come on up here? And I, I want to extend this, this prayer time because we, we want to pray for this little, uh, this little girl, right? Yeah. We, want, we want to pray for her. Her name is Dolores. Rosalind, we want to pray for Rosalind, uh, but any, any other body, anybody else, if you have a special prayer request, I want to invite you to come on up here. Just come right on up here if you want us to have a special prayer for you right now. Anybody else? Any, any other special prayer requests? I want to come up here because we want to pray for you. I want you to pray for me. Would you pray for me? I cannot shake this bronchitis, whatever this is. You have had it for, for weeks. You've had it for weeks. Still got that bronchitis. Okay. Uh, any any others? Any other special prayer requests, darling? Okay. All right. And for your legs. Yeah. Yeah, Randall. Yeah, sure will. Um, Connie was telling me, uh, put you on the spot, Connie. Connie's having... Uh, Sister on her eye, having some problems with her eye. So we want to pray for Connie. Uh, any, any other special prayer requests? Okay. Okay. Uh, come on, come on up here to the to the front. Connie, you're welcome to come up here. Uh, we we just let's 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 you know, let's let's surround them with our and, and lay our hands on them and let's just have have a, have prayer for them. Yes. Yes. Come up here. Here, Connie. All right. Our our, our heavenly Father, we 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 just. Uh, uh, thank you for prayer. How wonderful, Lord, that we can we can come to you in prayer and that you hear our every prayer. And thank you that you are a loving, heavenly, compassionate, heavenly father who, who cares about us and who loves us, your children, Lord. And you know all of our our heartaches and the problems and struggles that we have. And so, Lord, we just want to lift up in, in prayer some uh, these individuals and, and ask for your healing hand upon them um lord uh I, I pray for connie here with her her eye and uh this assist on her left eye that is that's bothering her and um we pray that the medication can can be helpful to heal it uh may have to have surgery uh lord we just pray that uh, her eyes going to be okay that she will not lose her eye that she'll be okay lord we pray for that i uh, thank you for vonnie lord uh we all love and appreciate vonnie and her her music skills here but she's had this this uh burst this this uh a bronchitis lord that is for a month now it's just that's just that's a long time and uh it, it's it's abnormally 
uh, long. It's, it's, it's something that's not right there. And I just pray that you will just help her bronchitis to be healed, Lord. Uh, you're, you're the great physician. And uh, Lord, I pray for Richard and Gloria and uh, their sweet little great granddaughter, Rosalyn, having more kidney problems, may have to go on dialysis. Lord, and she's in the hospital right now. And we just pray for this. She's just a little girl, just a little girl. I just pray, Lord, for your healing hand upon her. And, and Randall Spoons, Lord, I, I pray for him with his problems with his legs. Lord, he had a hard time coming to church this morning. Uh, he's, his legs are in pain, but he's here. And Lord, I, you're the great physician. And we pray, Father, that you will bring healing to them, to all of these prayer requests through medication, uh, through doctors, uh, and, and by your supernatural healing power, Lord. We just ask for your healing grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Right, let's worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. the next couple of Sundays today and next Sunday I'm preaching a messages a series of messages which I am entitling help for hurting hearts every single one of us have lost some dear people that have been very that are loved ones that we miss terribly and if you haven't lately then we certainly will in the in the in the near future and so we, we need help. We need encouragement. We need comfort from the, from the Lord during these times. And so uh, today I'm preaching on heaven. Next Sunday I'm preaching on coping with the loss of a loved one. And I put both of these sermons are going to be in booklet form. Now this is good because you can take these booklets home with you. You can refer back to them um, and you can share them with other people. And so we're going to have copies of both of these books available here at the church office for, for you that whenever um, you have a friend or family member that loses a loved one, you can extend your love and comfort and prayers and sympathy to them. But you can also give them a copy of this book, sermon booklet on heaven and also a sermon booklet on coping with the loss of a loved one as a way to minister to them and to show love and, con and concern and hopefully God's message will be spread to many people through these uh, sermon booklets. I also hope that uh, we can get these sermon booklets in the 
in all the funeral homes and all the area around here so that uh, they can be on a table there available for bereaving families in, in the community. So today I'm preaching on heaven and, and I've got to say that all words used to describe heaven, they're, they're, they're too meager. It's, our human our human language is just not adequate enough to describe the beauty and the wonder of that glorious celestial city called heaven if i could get a dictionary and and skillfully go through that dictionary and pick out the most beautiful descriptive words and then skillfully arrange them into a, a beautiful message and eloquently speak those words to you about heaven, it would be mournfully inadequate. There's no way I can do justice to really describe the beauty of, of that wonderful place called heaven. It's just too glorious. But I want you to have, I like to have you to think of, uh, there's, there's several words that we're going to be talking about uh, to describe heaven. But the first word I, I want us to, to, to think about is the word mistake. A lot of people have made grievous mistakes in word and deed over the years. For example, back before the Civil War, Governor Pickens of South Carolina made a mistake when he stood there in the town square of Edgefield, South Carolina, and he boldly announced that there will be no war between the North and the South. He was mistaken because all across America are Civil War battlefields where there were whining bullets and booming cannons and fields and streams stained with the blood of the slain. Even so, many people make a dreadful mistake in believing that heaven is not real. Many people think that heaven is it's just something that has come about because of wishful thinking, a figure of speech. That it is a, a dreamy, a lovely dream. It's a, a myth, a legend, a fairy tale. It's just what people hope but cannot know. It's, it's a, 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 a state of mind. That it is a condition of the heart. That it exists uh, everywhere and yet nowhere. No, that's not true. Heaven is a real place. Is real. It is just as real as this building and that chair that you're sitting in right now. It, 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 the Bible describes heaven as a place where, where, where we're going to see Jesus. Jesus in his glorified body. It's a place where we're going to be able to walk the streets of gold and see the pearly gates. And it is a beautiful country. The Bible describes it as, as, as a place where you can see the river of life. And on either side of the river of life are trees with leaves for healing. It is a beautiful country. And it is a beautiful celestial city where there is the throne room of God. And we're going to know each other. We're babe, we're going to talk together and walk the streets of gold and enjoy that wonderful city. It is just as real a place as the city of Fort Worth is a real place. Heaven is a real place. And it has foundations whose builder and maker is God himself. Now, the, the Bible doesn't tell us all that we'd like to know about heaven. But it does tell us some things that we can definitely know 
about heaven. And that's what I want to emphasize for you this morning. What are some definite things that we can know about heaven from the scriptures? And there's some different words that I'm going to be picking out. Here's the first word. Multitudes. Multitudes. The Bible speaks of multitudes of people are in heaven. When the apostle John got a vision of being caught up in the, as I talked about in, in, the, in the message of Apostle John on Revelation. Remember, he's, he's caught up there into the throne room of heaven, and he sees a multitude of people. Let's, let's look at the scripture verse here. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. That's found in Revelation 7, 9. Now, when the Apostle John, he wrote Revelation when he was in his 90s. He's like maybe about 95 years old. So, and about, some, about 95 AD or so, he he gets a vision that in heaven there's a multitude of people. Well, folks, there's been a multitude of people to have gone to heaven since he saw a multitude of people there. So there are, um, there's, a, there's a lot of people are in heaven. And they're from every nation. And they're from every language. There, there's a lot of people there from the state of Texas. A lot of people from America there, from where that first pilgrim forefathers came to our to shores of America looking for religious freedom. There's been a lot, there's a multi, there's going to be a multitude of, of, of Christians there from Africa and England and Scotland and Wales and Japan and even communist China because the Christian church is thriving in communist China and there's there's Christian churches and Christians that are in in communist Russia and there can be a multitude of people from there too and from South America all over the world multitude of people from South Korea the largest Christian church in the world is in South Korea and and so there's gonna be a multitude of people all over from all over there there's, there's plenty of people there. It's just, and they got all those angels there. And, and, and Apostle John spoke of a, seeing a, uh, just a thousands upon thousands of angels coming into the throne room to sing praise to God. So there, there's a lot, there's, there's a multitude there. We know that. Now there's another word to describe heaven, and that is marvels. Heaven it is so marvelous and so beautiful, which we, we just can't hardly describe it. And it'll just like if I got like a little coffee cup, it'd be like me trying to catch all of Niagara Falls in my little coffee cup. You can't do it. It's just like the human language. You cannot describe just how wonderful heaven is. It's beautiful more than we can imagine. I want to share with you some scripture verses that just speak of, of the beauty of this magnificent place of the city and the country of heaven. Let's look at some of these scripture verses. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain, great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God. Its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel. And the wall was made of jasper and the city as of pure gold, as pure as glass. And the foundations of the city were decorated with a precious stone. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb down the middle of that great street of the city and on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit yielding its uh, unit each month and the leaves of the tree are for the each sinner repents and believes so 
we get a picture of, of heaven as this, as, this, as this big, beautiful country where there is the new Jerusalem, the big celestial city. I, I love that, that imagery of where the, we're going to be with God and it's a beautiful country where the river of life on either side of the trees will leaves for healing. It reminds me of the Garden of Eden. In fact, that is exactly what heaven is. It's like being in the Garden of Eden again. For you see, you remember the, in the very beginning in, in Genesis, God made Adam and Eve. And he walked and he talked with them. They had a wonderful, close relationship with God. That's before sin came into the world, before they ate of that forbidden fruit. Then they had to leave the Garden of Eden. But lo, when we are in heaven, we're going to be walking and talking with God again. We're going to have that close communion with, in, with, in the presence of the Lord. And in a beautiful country, it's going to be just like being in the Garden of Eden again. Oh, it, heaven is a place of many marvels. My... My wife and I, we used, our son, Justin, used to have a little blue parakeet. He named it Peppy. And, 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 and Peppy lived in a little cage. We had it in our house. Oh, Peppy had like a little dish there. We put some, some food, had like a little water bottle for his water, had a little swing. A little Peppy would sit on that swing and swing. And, and we had it on our, on our, on our table in our, in our den. And that... That was Peppy's whole world was in that little cage. That's all he knew. That's all he saw. What would have happened if I had opened the door of that cage and then left the front door of the house open and let little Peppy just fly out of that birdhouse and fly around the house and then go out the front door and then fly outside and see Oh my goodness, all the blue sky and the clouds and the flowers and rivers and streams and mountains and cornfields and, and rolling hills and big cities and, and big nice parks and, and see some uh, uh, national forests and see some other wild game and see some other birds and just saw the beauty of this great big wide world that we lived in. That would have been so much of a better world for little Peppy than that little birdcage, right? Well, that's the way heaven's going to be for you and me. We're like in a little birdcage here. This, this, all that we see here on earth, this is our world. This is all that we know. But when we get to heaven, it's going to be like that birdcage is open. And we're, see a, we're going to see all the beauty of heaven's going to blow us away. It's going to be so glorious there. It's just, I just can't describe it. It's the marvels of heaven. And, and there's another marvel about heaven that just amazes me. And that is God's interest in one lost sinner. Because the Bible tells us that the angels rejoice whenever one sinner repents and gets saved. I, I, I think about how just a few weeks ago, Brenda's grandson, Briggs, he's 10 years old. And uh, we were back in the church office there and he prayed and he asked Jesus into his heart. And just think, the angels in heaven rejoiced when Briggs prayed and asked Jesus into his heart. And when, when I was a little child, I was six years old. And Randall, you were six years old when you accepted Jesus. I just think the angels rejoice when we prayed and asked Jesus into our heart. Whenever you got saved, the angels, and, and that is a marvel that just blows me away. That there, heaven's interest in each person and, and you personally, and they actually rejoice when you accepted Christ. That's just a marvel about heaven. Now let's go on to another word to describe heaven, and that's music. Right, Bonnie? Music. There's going to be awesome music in heaven. 
Let me just share with you some, some references here in, in Scripture from Revelation that just speaks of some of this music that's in heaven. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him that sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. They held harps given them by God and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. And that, all that, that, that section of scripture is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 13, and chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Oh, the glorious music that's going to resound thunderously in heaven. You know, I, I, I love our, our worship music that we have here every Sunday morning. Uh, it just gives us a little, little glimpse of, of, of the wonderful music that's going to be in heaven. If we could, if we could get the, our praise team and they get the praise teams of all the other churches all over the world and then all the the choirs and the soloists and duets and trios and all the quartets and all the all the gospel groups all over the world and, and, and got all the Christians together and we all met together and when there was orchestras playing, we had great, wonderful music and singing here on earth. That still would be mournful monotony compared to the music that's going to be in heaven. And we get to join in with all that praise and all that worship and singing when we get to heaven. That's a wonderful picture for you and me of what heaven is, what a big part of heaven is. Is, 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 is praise and worship to the Lord God in heaven. All right, well then, there's another word to describe heaven. The Bible talks about mansions. Mansion. I got a mansion over the hilltop. You know that song? All right, uh, mansions, and it depends upon which version of the Bible that you use. Uh, in, in John chapter 14, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. Other translations say, are many rooms. Other translations says, are many dwelling places. The point is that there is plenty of room for you in heaven. There's plenty of room for everybody in heaven. Heaven is a big and it's a spacious place. Plenty of room for everybody. In fact, the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 21 verses 15 and 16, he, he gets a vision of the new Jerusalem, the city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. And it's not the measurement of all of heaven, but it's the measurement of the, of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And he's told it told in this vision to measure it, and he measures it. Well, we we translate what 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 he's talking about into into what we can understand in miles, and that comes out to be that that the new Jerusalem is like fifteen hundred miles wide, fifteen hundred miles long. And uh, and the the width is 1,500 miles, kind of like kind of like a big big square. It's it's estimated that if every single person that was ever lived on Earth, if everybody that's ever lived on Earth accepted Christ and became Christians, 
then it would just hardly feel even just one corner of that place. Heaven is, it's, it's huge. It's beautiful. And there's room enough for everybody. And, there, and there's a couple other things about heaven that I, I want to mention. In heaven, there is no darkness there. No darkness. There's no electricity. You don't have to turn on a light switch. Because, you know, it's not lit by the sun. And have, uh, No, what lights up heaven, the Bible tells us, is, is the glory of, of, of the Lamb. The glory of the Lamb. Let, let's read this verse of Scripture here. Uh, here we'll go back a slide. Yeah. The city, this is what it says about heaven. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will wake by its light. And the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut. For there will be no night there. It's ne that's Revelation 21, 23 through 25. No darkness. The, the Lamb... The glory, God is his glory is so glorious and the glory of the lamb is so bright it just lights up heaven. And there's something else I want to say about heaven. A lot of people think that heaven is a place where we're just going to float around on a cloud strumming a harp. You know we have our little tiny wings and we're <laughs> little halo. And that's, a, that's the typical, what we picture, people picture heaven is like, man, that's not in the, I don't see that in the Bible. What I do see is that the Bible says that we're going to have opportunities to serve the Lord. We can serve the Lord, just like we can serve the Lord here on earth. We can serve the Lord. We're going to continue serving him when we get to heaven. And I know that because of this verse of scripture in Revelation. Let's, let's go back on and read this verse. Um, let's see. All right. Let me see if I can find it here. Is this it? Okay. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. No, I don't, I don't think that's the verse. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, just, just give me a minute, please. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I want to point this the scripture verse out. Um, all right. This verse of scripture is go. Let's go. Let's go back to that point there at the um, where I talk about. Um, Mansions, the last scripture verse. All right, let's 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 go on, go on, keep keep going, please. Okay, keep going. Oh, okay. We're missing that verse. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Um, okay. Just, just be patient with me. Good gracious. Uh, ah. It's in the <laughs> it's in our booklets. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's great. Revelation 22, 3. I was looking at 21. Revelation 21. Here it is. Revelation 22, verse 3. 
The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. And so we will be able to serve the Lord. So just like you're serving Him here, we will be able to serve the Lord in heaven. And that's, 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 that's glorious. And now let's go to uh, meeting in heaven. Meeting. Our greatest enemy here on earth is death. Because death robs us of our loved ones. The only... And, and death doesn't show any favoritism. Death doesn't care how old you are. Death doesn't care if you are a saint or a criminal or a child or an elderly person. Death comes to everybody. And the only music of death is the music of people crying. And the only flowers of death is flowers on coffins. And death is going to come for all of us. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ comes anytime soon, every one of us, death's going to come get all of us everywhere, everyone, eventually. And death conquers all, but death didn't conquer Jesus. Jesus rose victorious over death. And because Jesus rose again, if we have faith in him, then death is not the end for us either. We can arise and we're going to go to heaven and we're going to have eternal life and we're going to live forever in heaven because of the living Lord Jesus. And how wonderful to know that we will see our loved ones again in heaven. I know we will. I know that we will see and know each other in heaven. And the reason I know that is because of the story that's found on the Mount of Transfiguration. In, in that story, you had, you had Jesus and Peter, James, and John. They were taken up on a high mountain, and Jesus was transfigured before them. His face became it glowed with a brilliant white, and his clothes became brilliant white, radiant white. And, and there appeared talking to him. Uh, we got a vision of heaven there. There appeared talking to him. Peter saw him. Talking to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration was Moses and Elijah. And you remember what Peter said? Peter blurted out, Lord, let me build three tabernacles or three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, Peter had never seen Moses and Elijah before. Because they're from the Old Testament days. They lived like a thousand years earlier. And Peter never saw a picture of them. I mean, yet, when he saw them and talking with Jesus, he recognized. He, he said, That's, let me build a tabernacle for Moses and for Elijah. He knew who they were. He heard them talking with Jesus. That gives us a glimpse of what it's going to be like in heaven, where we will see each other, we will recognize each other, we will know each other, and we'll be able to talk and to hear each other. Isn't that glorious news? Yes, it is. It's wonderful. We'll be able to hug each other there. The, the kiss of reunion is going to be just as sweet as the goodbye kiss on the deathbed. We will see our loved ones again. Hallelujah for that. R.G. Lee was a, was a famous preacher of years back, and he, he, a friend of our family, he, he tells a story of when he was, a, he was an elderly man when I was just a child, and he's, he'd been, he's long gone to heaven. But he, tells, he told this story that when he was a little boy, he asked his grandmother, what was the happiest day of your life? And his grandmother said, well, it was when I was a little girl. I grew up on a farm with my mom and my dad in Mississippi. And the Civil War happened. And my dad 
went to fight in the Civil War. Well, he's gone for months, and we, we went to town one day. And we saw some Confederate soldiers, and one of them told my mom that Daddy was dead. And we were devastated. So me and my mom, we, we, we went back home, and we had to work that farm by ourselves do all that weeding and hoeing and taking care of the animals. It was a hard work. And a long time passed by, months passed by. My mom was so bereaved, and she just kept, she just kept talking about Daddy, wanting to see Daddy again. And we were sitting on the front porch one day, and we were snapping green beans. Mom was rocking on a rocking chair, and Mom said uh, to me, I was laying down on the front porch there, and Mom said, uh, I sure do miss your daddy. I sure wish I could see him. And, 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 she, and she looked up, and she saw way off in the distance, coming over the hill, there was a, there was a man. He was walking. And she said, uh, I miss him so much, I think I'm seeing things. because that man, he even walks like my husband. She just kept snapping beans. She looked up there another moment. She said, man, something must be, I must be seeing things. Because he even, he even looks like him, but my husband. And then suddenly, then suddenly mom, she, she jumped up. And she dropped the green beans on the, on, the, on the front porch. And she ran off that front porch. She had run across that field toward that man. And she was screaming out, it is your daddy. It is your daddy. And, and I came running, and, and sure enough, mom and dad, they ran toward each other, and they, they embraced, and they were hugging, and they were, and they were kissing. And daddy, he only had one arm, but he was alive. And, and, he, and he held me, and, and we all just laughed. And, and she said, that was the happiest day of my life. And just think how glorious it's going to be when we do see our loved ones again in heaven I've, there's, there's no no cancer there there there's no no leukemia there's no blood clots there's no no wheelchairs there's no hospitals no nursing homes no arthritis no no bronchitis <laughs> no leg pains we're getting there and all that's gone. Sin's gone. Shame's gone. Uh, and I, I've, I've told Jenny, I said, that if, uh, that if I die before you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right there at that pearly gates waiting on you. She said, I'm going to come running to you before you get to the pearly gates. So, uh, I can't wait to get to heaven and, and, and to see my loved ones again, to see my mom and my dad and my, grand, my grandparents again, that, that wonderful reunion. And I, I love genealogy. I, I've studied my ancestors, and, and now I want to get to meet them. And, and uh, I want to see my niece, Angela, there. And... Uh, it, it's, it's going to be wonderful, and, and and I want to meet I want to meet Jenny's grandmother because I've heard so much about her and I've never met her, and I want Jenny to meet my mother because she's heard so much about my mom she's never met my mother, and I want to walk those streets of gold, and I want to just shake hands with all my my friends that I knew here on 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 earth, and, and I want to meet those great people of the Bible, I I, I want to meet. Uh, Peter and James and John uh, and the Apostle Paul and, and Moses and Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and, 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 and Moses and Samuel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and, and Adam and Eve and, 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 and meet them all. But the main one that I want to see is Jesus. I, when I see Jesus, I just want to fall down at his feet. And just just weep. Tears of gratitude 
and love and appreciation, just saying, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Thank you for saving me. Lord, you're just wonderful. Just thank him. Heaven is a, it's a glorious place. Now I want to close by this other word, and that is um, madness. Madness. A lot of people have a madness that's just a kind of a crazy madness and that they just don't make any preparations at all for going to heaven. They, they don't take heaven seriously. Uh, they, they procrastinate becoming a Christian, just put it off. They, they throw away the riches of heaven. It's just like it's trash. They just totally disregard heaven, have no thought or care about heaven and make no preparations at all to go there. When my mother died, one thing that kind of helped me was thinking that my mom, she's still alive. Well, she's just in another country, a country where there's no pain and there's no death. And I'm going to go to that country one day and see her. And that's exactly what heaven is. It's another country and there's no pain. There's no sorrow. In fact, the, the scriptures tell us that in, in, in heaven, there's, there is no pain. There's no sorrow. There's no tears. And um, so if, if there... Since there is such a place, there's no pain and sorrow. It's a beautiful country. It's, it's, a, it's a place where there's a beautiful city. There's, there's no hurricanes there. There's no hospitals there. There's no medication. No need for all of that because there's total good health there. You never grow old. You never get feeble. You never have aches and pains. It's a wonderful place. Surely every one of us would want to go see that place, right? We would want to go there. And not, not, just to, not just to visit it, but to live there. Well, there is such a place. It's called heaven. Why not make preparations for it? Why risk the opportunity that you could miss heaven forever? All it takes is just faith is saying yes to Jesus. God has done everything he can to make the way to get to heaven. He sent his son Jesus to be our savior. All we've got to do is accept Jesus. That wonderful scripture verse in John 3 16, with God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you've never prayed and asked Jesus into your heart, if you want to go to heaven, then I want to, I want to lead us in a prayer. And I ask that you just pray this prayer with me right now. If you want to become a Christian, if you want to go to this place called heaven, then, and, and, and if you've never prayed this prayer, then pray this prayer in faith. Dear, pray with me. You can just repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And that I don't deserve to go to heaven. But thank you for sending Jesus. To be my savior. Who died on the cross. And rose again. I believe in Jesus. And ask Jesus to come in my heart. And save me. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our praise team is going to come up here to the front. I just want to invite you just to come forward. And, and, and I'll be waiting for you down front. You can just come up and shake my hand as a way of saying that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. And, and you, want, you want to be baptized and you want to join this church family. Or if you want to move your letter of membership to this church, you just, you just come on. You just come on. All right? Let's, y'all, you just come right on as we stand together, as we sing.
the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything the Lord as time goes by, I will be by your side, cause I never wanted your back to my own We are about to go into business or we are about to go into business meeting but i want to give the invitation um, that if you would like to to join our church here that you can do so right now i would ask that you just raise your hand and uh we'd like to we'd like to vote you in as a member here because that way if you are a member of our church then you are a part of our church family you have a vote. You have a say in what goes on. And we value your thoughts. We want you to join so you can be a member, so you can vote and be a part of us. And so uh, I'm going to just quickly ask, is there anybody here that would like to join our church? And we just, we'll just, we uh... just, all right, TJ, all right, anybody else want to join our church? We'll, we'll vote you in this morning. All right. Okay. Anyone else? All right. All right, TJ, we'll, we'll have a form for you to fill out and you can fill it out after the service and, and be a part. All right. I'm going to ask that Harley, would you come and lead us in our, our closing prayer? Father, how appropriate it is today that we learn about heaven. Father, we went through Easter where we saw the sacrifice, the shed blood on the cross and the rising from the grave. Father, when you were there, you told us that as you leave, you will prepare a place for us. Father, this is what you did. What a bang-up job you must have done. It's more than we can imagine. It's more than we can ever fill with our earthly minds. Father, we thank you that you loved us enough not only to come, not only to shed blood, but, Father, to prepare a place for us. Father, we thank you for the grace and the mercy. Father, there's room for everybody in heaven. You didn't build it halfway. You didn't build it almost. You built it complete. Yes. No bounds. We're all welcome. It takes a sacrifice of God coming to you. And Father, your grace is more than enough and sufficient. No matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, we come to open arms to you. Father, thank you that we can imagine just a limited amount of what heaven must be. Thank you, Father, as we go today, that we keep in mind as we look around, the beauty around us, Father, is nothing compared to the beauty of what we'll see. Father, we thank you this morning for this time that we can spend together. Father, we pray always that you forgive us of our shortcomings. Father, we pray and love you. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go.
Every time. 